goggles optional. Hello from six feet away and welcome to Goggles Optional. Every week on the show, we bring together a group of Stanford scientists to give our professional and unprofessional opinions about the week's science news. I'm Carmen Azevedo, and I'm joined virtually by Dr. Katie Walwyn brown who will update us on a recent COVID-19 vaccine news. Hello. To start us off, Katie will share recent developments in the race to produce a COVID-19 vaccine. Thanks, Carmen. I'm going to start today with some cautiously hopeful news. To give a very brief reminder, COVID-19 is the disease caused by the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which emerged in late 2019 and was declared a global pandemic in March 2020. Scientists around the world are working hard to better understand the virus and develop a vaccine, which is what I want to talk about today, with some newly published results from a phase one and two trial of a coronavirus vaccine from Oxford University in the UK and AstraZeneca. But first, let's review what a good COVID-19 vaccine would look like and what kind of testing that it has to go through. Vaccines protect against disease by introducing pieces of inactive virus to the immune system. This prepares the immune cells to make a stronger and faster response if they encounter the actual disease causing virus later on. Because of the pandemic situation, we ideally want a vaccine that can give this immune protection after just one or two doses. Some vaccines are given in more doses over a longer time. For example, the hepatitis B vaccine is often given as three doses over six months. We also want a vaccine that is both safe and effective for immunocompromised individuals and elderly people, as these are high risk groups for COVID-19. This is a challenge. Even some flu vaccines don't work very well for elderly patients. We also want protection for at least six months, and that's going to take some time to test at least six months. Well, considering it feels like we've been sheltering in place for approximately one billion years, <laughs> and actually it's only been four months, uh, yeah, that kind of feels like a long time to wait. Yep, yeah, it's going to take some patience. And vaccines also have to go through a rigorous clinical development process. First, there is preclinical testing on cells in a dish and on animals to see if the vaccine is likely to work and seems to be safe. Then in phase one, it's given to a small group of healthy individuals to test safety and initial immune responses. Phase two then expands to a larger group of healthy individuals, generally somewhere in the hundreds, to test safety again and dosage effects. Finally, if the vaccine is safe and shows some initial immune responses, a large phase three trial with thousands of patients over a longer time will test if it actually protects against disease by comparing it to a placebo. As of today, the 7th of July, there are approximately 140 preclinical studies, 19 phase one, 11 phase two, and only three phase three trials for COVID-19 vaccines underway, with no vaccines yet approved. The Oxford AstraZeneca trial result published in The Lancet is a phase one and two study looking at safety and initial immune response. They use something called an adenoviral vector a harmless non-replicating virus, which is good for delivering proteins into living things, which makes it a great tool for research and for vaccines. This type of adenoviral vector vaccine has previously been shown to work well for elderly patients, which is good for our COVID vaccine checklist. The vector delivers the full length SARS-CoV-2 spike protein. They compared this vaccine to a vaccine against meningitis as a control, and the study was single blinded, so patients didn't know which vaccine they were getting, but the doctors did. The good news is that there were no serious adverse reactions to the vaccine. Many patients had some mild tenderness, some fatigue and headaches, but these could be reduced using common painkillers. More good news is that the vaccine induced neutralizing antibodies. This means that in the blood of vaccinated patients, there were proteins which slow the growth of SARS-CoV-2 in the lab. They also showed that another branch of the immune system, T cells, responded to the COVID spike protein after this initial vaccination. Hmm, I mean, this sounds really promising. I mean, I feel like we don't get positive COVID-19 news very often, so it's really exciting to actually have some. <laughs> it is encouraging, but it's not quite time to break out the champagne. As I mentioned, this is only a phase one and two study. So it's not actually meant to show if the vaccine works to protect against disease, and it really doesn't. 
The paper authors themselves also highlight that this study is on a small number of young, healthy, mostly white volunteers and only measures short term effects. The phase three trials currently underway in the UK, South Africa and Brazil will tell us more. There are also some similar phase one and two study results from a vaccine developed in China by CanSino, and we're waiting on reports from Pfizer and Moderna for their vaccines, which we expect soon. There's still a lot of scientific work to do. We don't actually know if a neutralizing antibody or a T-cell response protects against COVID disease in humans, although there's some encouraging evidence from animals that it might, or how long that protection will last. It might be that these immune responses protect against the worst symptoms, but don't completely prevent infection, so the virus spread would still be an issue. In summary, there's still a lot of hard work to do before an effective vaccine is widely available, but this is hopefully a step in the right direction. Nice. It's really cool to see how quickly these vaccines are being developed. It's likely that whatever COVID vaccine wins this race, it'll be the fastest vaccine ever made in human history. Thanks, Katie, for that cautiously hopeful update. 